Hey Dungebags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and welcome to a new video series I like to call Rapid Fire Reviews. Now basically what this series is going to be is I'm going to be covering a lot of albums that I missed in my reviews, either ones that I took too long to make uh, that have been out for a while, or just albums that I didn't really have a lot to say about. So that's basically what this series is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and get straight into this as quick as I can. The first record, Galaxies Between Us by Kill Paris. A uh, very solid record uh, from the previews. I actually didn't really like it that much, but decided to take a gander at it. I was really looking forward to this record for a while, but after I had heard the previews and a couple of tracks, I was kind of disappointed, but I ended up actually liking it, but I didn't realize that I liked it until a while after it had actually released. So, uh, make sure to listen to the through this record as a whole. Don't try to listen to this for the singles because you're really not going to be pleased. If you listen through this as a whole, it's going to be a really good record. Uh, my, some of my personal favorites were Space Forest and Tropical Dinosaur, and I didn't really dislike much of this record, but I didn't love a lot of this record too. Like I said, Space Forest, he's got some awesome synth work, and basically what I'd like to compare this to is the new Grizz record, which uh, I think I actually gave a 7.5, which was three quarters good, I think I rated it as, so I'm gonna give this one a solid seven. The next one is LTN's People I'll Never Forget. Now this was released on Enhanced Progressive, even though it's primarily a trance album, and if you know me, I'm not a huge fan of trance, which means that I probably shouldn't make a separate video because I'm gonna get a lot of dislikes uh, for criticizing a trance album. Now, I've enjoyed quite a few of trance albums. Uh, Armin Van Buren's last album, the Above and Beyond record, even though that's mostly house, but those are a couple trance acts I really like. Gareth Emery's last record was definitely a solid one, but this record in particular I didn't really like too much. A lot of it just kind of sounded like generic trance and although I was really excited for it and it built up to be a really awesome album, I didn't end up enjoying it as much as I could have and uh, if it would have shown a little bit more diversity rather than just been a straight kind of trance record that kind of just sounds like a collection, not really a theme, uh, I probably would have enjoyed it a little bit more. Uh, some of my favorites, Quicksand, Here I Am Again, Somebody I Could Be, and Live as One. And now Live as One, I was had conflicting views about. I really love the production on this one. I really like the synth work on this one, and I really like I love the production and the melody on this. But the vocal work, I just it was so cringy. I, I like it at points, but most of the time it's just kind of subpar. But I did really like this track, and kind of the second half of this record is when he pulls back and tries to captivate the fans that probably didn't like the first half of the record like me with primarily trance and not much really interesting. Uh, I'm gonna give this record a solid four because uh, because of the turnaround through the half point but then not all the songs on the second half were amazing either so uh, that's my opinions on that. Julian Callor's Evolve. Uh, I was really hyped for this album actually a while ago. I was kind of in a hate state for Julian Keller uh, and his music because it was on Revealed and I'm just not a big fan of most of the stuff on Revealed. And I, I, even though I gave Hardwell a pretty good rating, uh, I wasn't, which was a 6.5, so never mind, that, that wasn't that great of a rating because it wasn't that great of an album. I listened through this the whole way. I was pretty disappointed at the lack of transitions that Julian had on this album. I was kind of expecting something more that would flow well, but it seemed like with the intro track and a few other interlude tracks, he could have made it flow really well into a nice record, but instead it kind of just cuts off, and a lot of it just sounds like it's a compilation of dance music and electro tunes with his style, and I didn't feel like he reached out too much. There's a couple tracks like To The Core, and this one's absolutely insane, Moombaton, Moombacore, whatever you want to call it. This could have easily been a Dylan Francis collab, but it wasn't, and I was really impressed with that, that uh, Julian was able to pull this off, even though he's more of an electro producer, and I really liked the sound on that one. Uh, there's a few other ones that I like, Cell, it's actually got a few like cell phone tones mixed in, which I really enjoyed. There's the intro pace, and this one really built up as a nice progressive tune. Like I said, I was a little disappointed at the lack of transitions, but definitely a good standalone track, I thought. There's a track, Another Template, which is very melodic, but kind of pulls in a little bit of a unique sound. And then lastly, there's the vocal edit of Typhoon, which he called One Shot, and I I actually love this compared to the original. I wasn't a huge fan of the original, but I think the vocals fit a lot better on this track than the instrumental was originally, and I 
Also enjoyed the vocal on this one a lot more than any of the other vocals really on the record except maybe to the core. That one was very good as well. I'm going to give this one a 5.5 because it was slightly above uh, par to me, which par I'd say is 5. Uh, just average album. Not a lot of bad, not a lot of good. Uh, it was a little better. So about one point under where Hardwell's album, which, which I would say is pretty good for Julian. So uh, big ups. There was the Dreamwalker by Angels and Airwaves, which uh, which actually released last winter. I think it might have been in December, but the CDs didn't come out until recently in the last couple months. Uh, and I actually, re I think I refused to listen to the record until I was able to get on CD, because I was actually expecting a lot from the Angels and Airwaves record. And from the reviews, I actually heard it was going to be pretty bad. And then um, when I listened to it, I kind of understood that a lot of it just isn't very exciting. And I really like the uh, intro track to this album. But honestly, not much of it was too exciting, and I got a lot out of their last record, Love. Uh, definitely a great record, you'll have to check it out if you haven't yet, but uh, that was probably one of my favorite records that Tom DeLonge has done, yet I, I just wasn't overly impressed with the Angels and Airwaves record, uh, this particular one anyway. I guess there's more coming for them, and hopefully we hear some more interesting stuff, but right now it kind of sounds pretty generic, and I was just hoping for a little bit more. So I'm going to give the Dreamwalker a 4.0, uh, I think that's the same rating that I gave LTN's album. Uh, it's got a little bit of good, a lot just kind of boring, didn't really dislike too much of it, but it just wasn't something that I really want to put my ears to for a while. Finally closing off is the second album from Passion Pit, it's called Kindred, and I would have liked to do a full album review on this if I could have, but it's too late at this point to do a Passion Pit album review because it came out I think close to a month ago and even though a couple of the other ones on here came out a while ago I just felt like I couldn't include this in a second review so that's kind of why I wanted to include that in this video. Uh, there's a few awesome tracks on this one like 1985 I'm just gonna mention that really quick awesome track uh, Passion Pit kind of gives off this gives off this Owl City vibe where he's got these really nice vocals and uh, awesome production skills, a little bit of electronic influence while still retaining his alternative style. The only thing I really disliked about this record is that it kind of leans toward a little bit more of a pop sound and I didn't really, although I, I tend to like alternative bands taking a little pop route, I think this album was a little too candy sweet for me to love. There's this streak of good tracks, there's 5 foot 10, and there's Dancing on the Grave. A lot of these tracks are just really nice, and they're very nice uh, to listen to as singles, like I said, but the album as a whole gets a tad boring, and there's a couple tracks like Whole Life Story, which is the second track, which just kind of a little bit of a letdown to hear that. But uh, overall, this album's not even, it's not really that bad, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, for the most part. Only has 10 tracks, which was a little disappointing because I would have liked to hear a little bit more and a little bit more of an interesting sound, but gonna give this one a 6.5. Like I said, that's what I gave Hardwell's. For very different reasoning, uh, Hardwell's just had a few bad tracks, but it had a lot of other tracks to make up for that, for the rating. If it didn't, then my rating would have sunk very deep into the grave, and on this one, there was a a lot of good tracks uh, and a few bad ones, a couple bad ones, but there wasn't that many tracks to start with and it gets a little repetitive. So like I said, 6.5. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to see more rapid fire reviews. They're probably going to come a lot because I was just, I d actually thought of this idea because I was so stressed out about having to do, I had like five or six reviews on the waiting list that I just <laughs> wanted to uh, take care of and I figured I could get them all down in this video and I've got like four more I have to record this week so that's going to be pretty fun and uh, anyway hope you guys enjoyed this little review look forward to more coming uh, rapid fire reviews